Alright, um, the title for our talk is Everyday Discipleship. Everyday Discipleship. So I want to read a passage of scripture just to kind of uh, jump off. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, rather familiar passage of scripture. Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. These words I am giving to you today um, are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. <clears throat> Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your head, and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on the gate. So again, now we're going to talk about everyday discipleship, leading your children to Christ daily, not weekly. Um, the context of Deuteronomy chapter 6 is, this is Israel, newly freed uh, from five, uh, 400 years of Egyptian uh, bondage, and now God is kind of instructing them uh, how they are to live. So... Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, God uh, basically tells them to reject the idols of Egypt and to live this way. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, he gives the Ten Commandments. <clears throat> and then here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, he um, gives what, what Jesus later referred to as the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. So, and then right after that, he interestingly enough goes into how we live every day in our homes. So, uh, again, today we're going to talk about what that looks like to disciple our children um, to Christ daily, not weekly. Uh, unfortunately, many of us were raised to relegate the things of God, uh, our spiritual formation. Our, unfortunately, our parents uh, relegated our spiritual formation to uh, weekly service. Uh, holidays, whatnot. Uh, so we want to talk about how we um, are to point our children in practical ways to Christ every single day and not uh, leave it up to the pastor or the youth pastor. So my wife is going to talk about how we learn together or how we learn as a family, and I'm going to talk about how we serve as a family. All righty. Hello, hello. All right. Learning together as a family is something I, I think I kind of know well with my kids all day, every day at home school. <laughs> so uh, God has taught me a lot through that. Pray for um, this lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right now as I'm reading to you, I'm reading out of a book with scribbles. <laughs> and I'm wondering if you'll take me seriously. But anyhow, uh, how can we learn together? <laughs> we must take note of Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse 5 or 7, those those verses in particular, 5 through 7, where that is speaking to us as parents when it's telling us to, in our spiritual lives, when it's telling us, mom and dad, we have to love God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our might. And it has to be in our hearts first. Then, as in the next verse, we will be able to impress, as the NIV says, impress those words on our kids' heart. Or the Amplified Version also uses that word, impress word of God in their hearts. Um, another way of looking at this, repeat the words of God to our children. It's how the whole standard version reads it. So impressing those words and the truth of God on our, on our uh, children's hearts comes in one way. It comes by learning together. You know, making a journey together. Um, and we're going to talk about this from the aspect of fighting. Fighting against time. Fighting against distractions, uh, lack of energy uh, to do that, to be able to lead our children to Christ daily. That's a, it's going to be a fight. It's not going to come easy. We're not going to always feel like doing it. Uh, so we need to fight against those distractions. And even sometimes fight against lack of cooperation, you know, from our children or different, you know, family members in order for us to lead them daily. So I've used this acronym FIGHT to break this down, some suggestions and some things that we find uh, are essential to uh, having God in our life present daily. Uh, the F I is a reminder for us to have family worship or devotion time. Uh, it shouldn't be complicated. I used to think it was really complicated and for a long time, therefore, I didn't do it, you know, because I kind of complicated.
complicated. I got books and everything, and, you know, and I just said, just forget it, you know. But family devotion time or worship time at home is simply reading the scripture, giving a brief explanation on a childlike level or age-appropriate level, um, praying together, and then I think it's very important to sing a song together. All of this may seem very awkward, as it did for me. I didn't do this in my home. So having, you know, singing together, you know, that was something for church, you know, not at home. But it's so, so very important to have what we do on Sunday be reflective during the week in the home and become a norm and not something odd. And so it might be awkward in the beginning trying to do that if it's not something you're used to or you don't feel that comfortable with. But just press on and try it and at, at soon it'll just become normal for us. And usually it's the parents, it's us the adults that feel awkward. The children, especially the younger they are, they enjoy it. They love it. Now if you have older children, again, don't be discouraged. Continue, keep doing it, be consistent, and God will work in their hearts. Um, be excited. You can hear some repetitiveness, <laughs> but that was the exact same word like Mike said uh, earlier. We have to show excitement and knowing God and teaching about God and showing our love for God in the home. Uh, as mom and dads, we are the thermometer in our home. We set the tone based on our enthusiasm or lack thereof of what's going to happen in our home. If they don't see you excited and it seems like a chore, come on, let's go pray. You know, oh my gosh, I had a hard day. Come on, sit down. Get the Bible, yelling at them. You know, <laughs> nobody's heart is going to be in it. So, it's plain and simple. Last point for family worship and devotion time. Most important thing is to be consistent. We are going to be tempted. Again, this is why I say it's a fight. We're going to be tempted many times to say, you know what, things are just going to, you know, uh, against me right now. And the enemy will throw things up to try to discourage us from making this a consistent part of our family life. But don't skip it. And even if one parent can't be there, I want to emphasize that. It doesn't have to be both of you there every time. It's ideal. But if one parent maybe has to work or is out of town, keep it consistent. Our children especially uh, benefit from consistency in their life and especially in their spiritual life. The I am fight will represent intentionally memorizing scripture. I say intentionally meaning, you know, pick scriptures, start basic, I would say. If you're not comfortable with or it hasn't been a, a habit for you of memorizing scripture, you know, as a parent, you know, as an adult, this starts small, starts simple, uh, especially with, uh, you know, smaller children. You can start with just teaching them God is love. It's a very important and powerful uh, characteristic of God that's in the scriptures, and they'll know something about the person that you are trying to bring them closer to. And just do it together. Make it fun again. Try to make it fun and a family thing, a journey for you all together. Don't be inhibited and listen to... That voice that might be in your head, well, you don't read it, you don't know it, you know, uh, you don't know enough, you're not prepared, you're not, you know, you don't know enough of the word of God to teach someone else. You grow together, and I think that's something that will really touch your children's heart, it will bring you closer together as a family, and it will grow you all spiritually stronger. Uh, if mom and dad are having personal time, like it was spoken about earlier, if you're having your personal devotional time, which is essential, again, for you to get it in your hearts first, if you're doing that daily, um, simply you can pull the scripture from what you're reading and focusing on. It doesn't have to always be something that specifically maybe in your mind seems to tie into children, like obey your parents. That's probably the first <laughs> one we think of, but teach them that. I mean, it can be anything. Try to, you know, whatever you are learning in your personal spiritual walk, pick something out of that that you can relate, relate to your children and on their level. I think it's important, not just for your family, but just... Uh, in general, on us um, given, being able to testify to others outside of our family to be able to speak God's word and relate it on a childlike level. It's, that's just essential and it's hard. But if you can do that and practice it with your children first, it'll make it easier even when you're going outside of your family and representing Christ. So help them to connect the, the scripture to their life to Pick scriptures. When you pick a scripture, help them figure out a way to apply it. To their life. So many children and people I know, you know, give their kids, you know, scriptures that just 
you know, have no meaning really to them <laughs> because, you know, they're a child. They don't, they don't understand. They're trying to understand all this stuff. And sometimes it's the parent's idea or, or goal just to get them to memorize a lot of God's word. That's not going to stick in their hearts. That's not going to allow them, it's not impressing it in their hearts. That's giving them head knowledge, and we don't want that. We want heart change. Let's, and lastly, let's start with uh, just smart, small uh, intentions of building up to longer passages. <coughs> also, don't, kinda, don't stay stagnant and just learning one of those short verse. Try to, and that's kind of making it fun and challenging for all of you. Build upon that. Get to the point of maybe a passage. The G in fight will stand for getting down and praying on your knees. Now, I don't mean necessarily you always have to pray on your knees. But it fit my G, so <laughs> get down and pray. <laughs> but we should, you know, sometimes we get away from that too. You know, the humility and getting on our knees. I know I have, you know, kind of gotten away from that sometimes. You know, uh, there is a, a humility and honoring of God to be able to, one, let our children see that we do that. You know, the way chairs and churches are set up nowadays kind of takes away from that. But in the past, traditional churches, people would commonly get on their knees and pray. So it's important to let them see us do that, you know, sometimes. But more than anything, just taking time to pray together. Find a consistent time to pray with them. You sending your kids to school is so important to cover them in prayer, not only you just by yourself, because I think a lot of times as parents we do that on our own. We pray for our kids, but they don't see us. They don't hear us praying. We don't put our hand on them show that affection that Kimberly was speaking of, you know, and, and pray with them and for them. And more than anything, asking them, what can I pray for you about? What do you want mommy or daddy to pray for you about? Um, and then going back and recounting the things that happened uh, that God did, how he showed up and how he answered those prayers is essential. Another um, way or time, a little suggestion of how you might want to incorporate prayer, like intentional prayer, is maybe making bedtime, the ritual of bedtime, be a time that you don't just rush like we do sometimes and just hurry and get them into bed because you want your time. But, you know, take that time with each of your children to talk to them about their day. Um, talk to them about their struggles, you know, joys, whatever. And give thanks to God for the joys and pray about whatever struggles they may be having. Pray with them. Teach them by doing it with them together. Um, Lastly, in regards to prayer, it's important, and I kind of touched on this, but let them see you praying alone and having your time, and that you have a relationship, a personal relationship with God. It's not just in you know, your family unit, but you talk to God. And share with them and be transparent. You know, can you pray this morning? I asked my daughter, pray for me. You know, I, mommy is nervous. <laughs> and she said it was funny, Sarah. <laughs> Big people don't get nervous. <laughs> I said, well, no, they do. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, I, I often, and, I, and it's really comforting to me as a parent to go to my child sometimes and know they will do it. They, will, they won't forget, <laughs> like we do sometimes. <laughs> and so, you know, include them. Tell them what your struggles are. Let them know, you know, uh, that mommy and daddy, you know, we struggle with things too. You know, we don't have it all together. We need God just as much as you. He's our father too. Uh, and just make it a daily habit, not just a, a weekly or when things are wrong. On to the H in fight. That to me is for us to have Bible study time. Bible study time during your week means that it's an opportunity to go deeper into the scripture. If you're having a devotion, that's usually something, can be something quick, where, like I said, it's a prayer, scripture, and a song of praise. But in Bible study, this is an opportunity for us to read aloud with our younger children the scriptures, the Bible. It's a book. It's the most important book ever. And they need to recognize that it's not just a book open for Sundays or um, uh, D group or, you know, just these uh, delegated moments. It's a book that they need to, to love and become very familiar with. So when we do our read aloud times with your kids, Make the Bible be one of the most important ones that you, you use often. And with your older children, as they be, or your children as they begin to learn reading, give them. There's so many Bibles out there now for every age level. And like I have a uh, 
ready to read Bible for one of my kids. So they were starting with that. They can have their own. And they need to read it on their own. Encourage that personal reading time even for your children. And then whether you're reading it to them or taking time to teach them, learn with them. Again, don't feel defeated. Don't feel less than just because you might be weak in certain areas spiritually. This is an opportunity to do it together to strengthen your spiritual uh, self with your children and to go deeper and answer those questions that kids have. It's just so many questions that they have that sometimes uh, just go unanswered or they get the wrong answer, led astray, um, because we don't take this kind of time. So Bible study weekly is a chance to go deeper and uh, seek out the answer. If you don't know the answer, it's another thing. A lot of times people are like, oh, no, no, they ask really crazy questions sometimes. <laughs> you know, but valid questions. Seek out the answer together and let it be, again, a learning journey together. Last part, the T in fight it stands for talking of God in all of your daily life and conversations. We want our children to hear from us how good God is, not just when he does wonderful, uh, magnificent things, you know, blessings of money, blessings of gifts. We want them to hear, <laughs> we, want, we want it to be a norm for them to hear us just thanking God for a sunny day, you know. Thanking God, you know, teaching them, you know, oh, thank goodness, you know, uh, I'm, I'm feeling so much better today. You know, a little cold. You know, we, just thank him, talk to him, talk about him, teach this to them because they pick up, they copy all the time, especially the younger ones. And it's the older ones are seeing it. They might not be showing you that they know it or see it or are noticing it, but they will to stay with them. Uh, just as Kimberly said about her son, they remember impressed on their hearts and let them in on your struggles like I said before uh, your questions regarding biblical matters be transparent in that don't act like you just you know understand everything lead them to their pastors and elders if you don't know uh, if you're a question you know, have a question about something yourself and and can't answer it for them and just testify with your daily life of his goodness uh, one small example, especially with younger kids, nature is like the biggest teaching tool uh, of just seeing God's glory. If we take time in our devotional time, in our um, uh, time of meditating on scripture, God would give us and speak to us when we have those teach when teachable moments are coming for us. You walk in, in the, on the street with your kid, a rainbow comes. Don't neglect the opportunity to point out a rainbow and what that means. The story of Noah. And that this is a constant reminder to all of us, you know, big and little, that God made a promise that he is keeping. And go to the story. It's, it's a teachable moment. Try to look out and pray for teachable moments. So that's all of my suggestions. And finally, I just want you to just not think that you have to have it all together again to begin any of these things. You can start today with family worship. You can start today with intentional scripture memorizing. You can start now, get down on your knees, praying with your children, um, and having Bible study, and talking about them, about talking to them about what you learned today, and how God reminded you in Deuteronomy 6 of his commandments for you, and how it's affected you. Fight to lead your kids to Christ daily, not weekly, by learning together every day, and begin today. I'm going to um, finish up just talking about how we serve together, but... Um, in Deuteronomy chapter six, we see um, that God doesn't God does not desire this um, the separation between sacred time and our daily lives. There, unfortunately, we've cre created this uh, discombobulation that this is God's time and then this is my time. This is God's money and this is my money. This is this I give God this right here and all the rest of this is mine. Um, but the scripture says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and everything belongs to him. So <clears throat> our entire lives, our worship, even in the mundane things of life, washing dishes and um, changing diapers, and that's worship to God because everything belongs to him. Um, but again, like, like I said earlier, um, people like myself, we were relegated to separate um, our time. This is 
I give God a couple hours on Sunday and the rest is me. You know, I do me all week and then I come to get my sins washed from the filth that I committed all week. Um, but that is not, that should not be the case. Uh, Deuteronomy 5, uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 5 says, uh, God desires and demands that we love and dedicate our entire being to truly following him. Um, we disciple our children toward Christ by living lives of worship and sacrifice to them in everyday life. We repeat that. We disciple our children. Again, doing this doesn't promise their salvation, but daily we're pointing, we're, we're gospeling them, we're, we're discipling them toward Christ. They're seeing our sacrifice. They're seeing our love. They're seeing repentance between spouses. They're, they're seeing our dedication to Christ, uh, and it makes it something that, like, man, this is this isn't something that is unattainable because my mom can do it. My dad can do it. But we disciple our children toward Christ um, as we live everyday lives of worship um, in all things. So <clears throat> just a few things on how we uh, can serve together as a family. Uh, first, revolve your house around the mission of God. Revolve your house around the mission of God. Um, this is just a little memo. I'm just going to put this out here. Uh, say amen or ouch. Um, your call to make disciples does not cease when you get married and have children. Your call to make disciples does not cease or get put on hold because you get cherries. It intensifies, actually. Uh, when you get married, uh, amen or ouch, um, it's not time to put up your feet and ah. No, when you get married, now you have the responsibility of reflecting Christ in your marriage to a lost and dying world. So there is the, there is no uh, no break. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to ease back in the mission. No, your, your house should revolve around the mission of God. And I see, unfortunately, uh, we get it kind of twisted um, because this new dynamic of marriage and then babies come and then kids come and then the mission of God either gets dropped totally off the table or, we, again, we give God the, the scraps. No, our, ho our house, our home, our marriage revolves around the Missio Day. We have to show our children that there is something greater Amen. to live for than going to work, getting a house, a car, a mortgage. We have to show our kids that there is something greater, much greater, much bigger than the things of life, just the little, the, the mundane things of life. But unfortunately, we put all our energy into that. Our kids have to see that, man, people, their friends, if their friends don't hear about Jesus, they're going to die and go to hell. They, they, they have to feel and understand the weight of that. But unfortunately, we kind of get that, uh, get that twisted and include them on the mission. Incl and encourage them to tell their friends about uh about Christ, encourage them to invite their friends. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we have to revolve our house around the mission of God. Secondly, um, we have to deny idols. Uh, I want to read this real quick. Joshua chapter 24, verse uh, 15, rather familiar passage of scripture. Joshua is getting ready to uh, go home to be with the Lord. Um, and he says, you know, y'all can live for the idols, you know, you know, all that good stuff. But he says, but uh, if it does not please you to worship Yahweh, choose for yourself today one of the gods you will worship, the gods of your fathers, <clears throat> beyond the Euphrates River and the gods of the Amorites and those lands. But as for me and my house, we will worship Yahweh. We have to deny idols. We have to constantly deny the idols of comfort, the idols of leisure, the idols of materialism that draw our whole family away from Christ. Uh, Tis the season for idolatry. Uh, it's right around the corner. Um, not the season to be jolly. Tis the season for idolatry. When, when we get it so twisted, and it's about me. It's about receiving. It's about, I know I got an iPhone 5, but the 6 is out. I know I got the iPad 3, but the 4 has new... You know, and what we do is when we when we when we buy into these things, we're telling our children that God is cool, but there are things more important than Him. Mm -hmm. You know, the idols of comfort, the idols of leisure, the idols of materialism. We show them that you know God is just for 
uh, when we come to church and when we go to D group, as opposed to showing them that God is not number one. There is not even a comparison. Everything revolves around him and nothing else uh, is, everything else is of very little importance. Um, make choices around God's word, not our convenience. Make choices. Our decisions, the way we uh, parent, the way we do marriage, should be around God's word, not around our convenience, not around our comfort. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the guy who, uh, Jesus, you know, you heard of him? He didn't live a comfortable life. He suffered. He, they tried to throw him off a cliff. They tried to stone him, and eventually he was crucified. The life of following Christ is not a comfortable life. And we need to show our children that. We need to show them that, baby, you're going to suffer. It's going to be hard. But guess what? Jesus is worth it. Jesus is worth it. You know, you know it, it's not a life of ease. And we, so often we, we, we kind of pamper our children. And we, and we play into that, that idolatry of our culture. Um, making gathering with the body a non-negotiable. Uh, I love what Hebrews 20, uh, 10, 24 uh, says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as many of you have. And the verse before that, that's 25, verse 24 says, the purpose is when we gather together, we spur each other on for good works. We encourage each other. We uh, 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 correct each other when necessary. But it's a necessary thing. We have to show our children that gathering together Sunday and for midweek, D group and fellowship, we have to show them that it's a joy. It's a privilege. You know, I, my kids get so excited Wednesday. Oh, my goodness, they get... They, they even actually clean their rooms. <laughs> but they get excited because it's something they see mom, mommy and daddy are excited. We're getting ready to, we're getting ready to have the family over for the house. Uh, have the family over to the house for D group. Um, and it, 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 we have to show them that it's not a chore. You know, Sunday morning, if you drag in your feet and you got an attitude and you're upset because they spilled some Cheerios and you got to change your clothes and, and you run, if you, if you, and I'm guilty of sin of that. <laughs> but I'm showing my kids that it's a chore. I'm not showing my kids that it's a privilege to go and worship the king. Um, um, if, if, if gathering corporately is not a priority to us, as they get older, it may not be a priority to them. Oh, when kids go away to college, they, they lose God. They never had them. They never had them. Because we, uh, often we show them this, this, ro this robotic thing we call Christianity, and it's, it's not following Christ. We have to show them that it's a privilege, it's a joy to partake in the things of God. Um, and lastly, teach and model sacrifice. Um, Romans 12 says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Um, again, showing them that everything belongs to God. I teach them and encourage them to give their time, their talent, their treasure. You know, when my kids get a little, little changed and rub together, I say, you know, save that for Sunday. Put it in. Give it to God, you know, and, you know, spend time letting them see you do things, taking them with you. Uh, I remember, and I never even realized that last year uh, I told my son, we're going to we're gonna go on a mission. And we were delivering turkeys and food baskets. And I just thought, you know, I just had Philip with me. And he still taught. I never even... I forgot all of that he was with me. And he said, I want to go on another mission with you, Daddy. I'm like, what, a mission? Said, remember when we went to deliver the food? And I said, remember I went to you, with, with you to the hospital? And I mean, I try to take him on things like that. But I didn't ever realize how much of an impact it has on him. He, he sees it like, I'm doing work with my dad. I'm sacrificing. We're setting aside time that we can be playing and resting and doing something uh, for God. So... I need to do that a lot more often, but I never realized how much of an impact it had on my son. Um, but yeah, showing them that, man, my life does not belong to me. My life, everything belongs to Christ. Um, and again, we want to leave you with, we lead our children to Christ daily, not weekly. If you have any questions, uh, we meant to uh, say this, if you have any questions, please write them down, and at the end, all of us are going to um, hammer them answer, but write them down so you don't forget. <laughs>